identical times to three decimal places in Super Pole this morning. Damage limitation perhaps for Alvaro Bautista. Moved into the second half of the 2022 campaign here in Manicor and there's more to come tomorrow starting at 11am local time with the Tiso Super Bowl race. Alvaro Bautista then looks to the inside of Alex Lowe's and he is going to pass him in towards turn 15. Again Alex Lowe's uh, in combat and it was previously Garrett Gerloff. This time it's Alvaro Bautista and that's what guys are Ready down! Jonathan Ray has come down coming off the final chicane at the end of lap number two. Top rack Rascat Leoglu. Now with a comfortable race lead of over half a second ahead of Scott Redding. A rare mistake from Jonathan Ray in his second crash of the weekend here in Manicor. Second crash of the day for Ray. Crash in FP3 this morning and now a crash through that last chicane. Probably bundled over the curbs through there. And that tends to be what unsettles the bike through there. But uh, Jonathan Ray down and out and that is critical for... Jonathan Ray who's pulling up now at the side of the circuit. So it's going to be no points scored from race one for Jonathan Ray. Yeah, uh, for Ray, that, as it stands right now... We'll put him 47 points adrift in the championship standings. Let's see what happens. Does he run over that inside curve? He just loses the rear coming through there. So for Ray, it's easy to get the bike on, settle through that corner. You place so much emphasis in the confidence that you have in the bike trying to run through this section and maybe just tag the curb there for Ray. And uh, that's what it was. But uh, as it is, he's out of this race, out of second position. And it's Down, it. top rack with a lead of over a second to his nearest rival, Scott Redding. I cannot believe it. And Alvaro Bautista will be rubbing his hands together. He's up into second place with his two main title rivals down in the gravel trap. And uh, for Top Rack, he had a one-second advantage. And uh, him and Jonathan Ray both down in the, in the same lap. And given the inclement weather we've had all the way through this weekend, you'd almost think there will spot a rain with the two championship contenders having crashed out. As it is, Alvaro Bautista, the number 19, he must just be counting his blessings at this stage. Ralph Gatlioglu, unlike Ray, has been able to remount. So he may stay and a chance of uh, at least picking up something, particularly if there's more attrition in the remainder of this race, or perhaps even uh, inclement weather. Uh, that's uh, Jonathan Ray himself uh, back up and running now, but Top Rack's 26 seconds uh, behind the race leader, and uh, more than likely to, to lose more by the time he gets through the next sector. I'm sure we'll see Top Rack fighting his way back through. He's only 15 seconds behind the uh, first man at the back of the queue, Oscar Gutierrez, the World SBK debutant. Uh, but here we're going to see it again. Yeah, this is coming through Imola down in towards turn 13 you'd imagine Ooh. Ooh. and top rack in the end doing well to avoid that being a whole lot worse than it uh, than it eventually was yeah and top rack would have just then ditched that before it comes up towards the tyre barrier just so that he's still able to recover it and try and get back on to score some points but big tank slapping moment there on the entry to the corner you can see the top rack there is still pushing hard at this stage so probably minimal damage done to the bike but uh, for top rack it's big damage done to his championship hopes Ray enters the pits uh, not keen to retire by the looks of things you just never know with the inclement weather of Manicor you may get a red flag you may get an opportunity to get back out there and, and get into contention but it doesn't look good for Jonathan Ray who of course is about to be lapped by all of this lot as well now uh, once again as uh, Scott Redding comes through at the end of lap four six tenths of a second clear of Aldo Bautista hunting him down does Bautista now settle into a rhythm and just say, do you know what, second place is good enough. 20 points gained potentially, certainly over Jonathan Ray, potentially over Top Rack Razgatli Ogil as well. Or does he now go after Scott Redding and risk it all for those extra five championship points? I think it's one of those situations where just being able to come away with a podium, 16 points would be a really successful amount to take out of these guys because as it stands right now, Ray and Razgatli Ogil both over 50 points adrift of Bautista. And uh, we've been saying all the way through this weekend about how strong Ray and Razgadi Oglu are around here, how big of a challenge it would be for Alvaro Bautista. He's at this one and the two. Well, uh, just as in Assen, when Top Rack and Ray uh, came together on that occasion and uh, were both ruled out of the action, uh, their absence from the top of the pecking order really now gives a golden opportunity to someone else, perhaps the two or three other riders who you might not necessarily have been expecting to take a place on the podium. It's Loris Baz who has assumed third position for the moment Axel Bassani and Michael Ruben Rinaldi directly behind him both with an opportunity now to try and uh, take a place inside the top three here this afternoon yeah it's a real chance now for a, a lot of riders to get themselves on those podium spots claim back some big points and uh, when you look at the 
positions right now. The likes of Locatelli on the 55, this is very costly for him unless he's able to make a lot of pro progress because the likes of Rinaldi, Bassani, Baz, they're all in a position to be able to challenge for that podium spot. Scott Redding doing a good job at this stage to hold off Bautista, but Bautista looks faster once again. Alvaro Bautista's made up almost half a second on that previous lap or, or made up almost half a second in the first three sectors, lose a little bit of ground in at sector four. Did notice uh, a couple of uh, spots there on the uh, onboard camera of Alvaro Bautista, but we've had no information about there being any rain, so it just could be a, a little bit of fluid or perhaps uh, a little bit of uh, dampness from, from one of the curves or one of the lines of paint. Here comes Bautista on lap... BMW since uh, Portimao last year with Michael Vandermark going on of course to the victory on that occasion but uh, a first win for Scott Redding with BMW appears to be getting closer and closer yeah BMW the progress is real we saw it with Lars Baz up there before his crash as well and uh, that's a really good sign for BMW with the steps they've made to that bike the changes to make it more comfortable for Scott Redding as well as the new swing arm they've all helped to try and bring that bike closer to the front for Redding as well there's less and less reliance on the BMW the electronics they're able to just make more and more out of that package by giving more and more control to the rider that's made a big difference for Reading. well that race is certainly going to require a second watch isn't it just to digest everything that went in separate incidents as well unlike in Assen when of course the two of them came together and both going down on their own as well so unusual for both of them who've been riding at such a high standard uh, we saw a few spills from Jonathan Ray last year but we never saw anything like that from Top Rack even when he was under intense pressure from Ray in the championship showdown in 2021 yeah for Top Rack certainly is a case that uh, it's a rare mistake but a very costly mistake and uh, it's going to be one of those things that he needs to bounce back from tomorrow as it is for an animal this season as well so much more consistent hasn't put a foot wrong for most of the campaign obviously the Donington Park crash notwithstanding but uh, it's been such a good effort by him all the way through and from Ducati very difficult to see any way back right now you, you'd have to say this has been a far stronger season from Alvaro Bautista even than 2019 and, and even accounting for the 11 consecutive wins at the start of 2019 his uh, debut season in the Superbike World Championship Bautista after 6 rounds in 2019 was 32 points ahead he was 31 points ahead after 6 rounds in 2022 and after Park whenever he injured that hand how quickly things can go wrong if you have one unfortunate incident for Alvaro Bautista he has 